This video is covering the top 10 songs on Billboard's mainstream rock chart ending with the week of June 29th, 2018. Welcome to Billboard Gets Rocked. While I only had 6 of my 10 predictions correct from last month, there are fortunately several new songs on the top 10 that I get to talk about. I enjoy talking about the new stuff on Billboard Gets Rocked. Let's take a look. Number 10, Uncomfortable from Hailstorm. Coming in at number 10 is a band that we haven't heard from in a while in a song that's only been on the chart for three weeks. Hailstorm were about to release their fourth full album, Vicious, and when I spoke to some of the guys from Hailstorm back in April, they said that their new album is a straightforward rock and roll blast. After hearing Uncomfortable, I do get that feeling from it. The song has a good build, and Lizzie Hale gets into it with the delivery in the verses. I wish there was a little more sting in the guitars, but it's still a good song. If I'm being honest, this is the best new song I've heard since Love Bites several years ago. Like many Hailstorm songs, I wish there was a bit longer of sections with just the guitar work, but that's a personal nitpick and hard to really complain about in this case. I don't always love everything Hailstorm does, but the song rekindled my appreciation for the band. It'll most likely stay in the top 10 next month because the new album is coming in just a few weeks. And because people can't get enough of Lizzie. Number 9, Walking in My Shoes from The Fever 333. Right off the bat, this is a new band worth checking out. The Fever 333 is a three-piece group fronted by Jason Butler from The Ashes of Let Live. This is a mix of post-hardcore and hip-hop through strong drum beats, all carrying some politically charged lyrics. The EP Made in America that has Walking in My Shoes was released back in March. With that quick summary of The Fever 333, this song is a good introduction for what to expect in sound. It has verses that are supposed to have as much of a punch as the chorus, and the rhythm is pronounced with Butler's performance. It's memorable for sure, and it's something different than what Billboard usually has at the top of the chart. <laughs> I like this song, and there's other words from the band that I enjoy even more, so like I said before, this is a new band worth checking out. Walking In My Shoes has been charting for 14 weeks, so it's not exactly brand new like Uncomfortable was from Hailstorm, but it's great to see a new band get this much airtime. I don't think Walking In My Shoes will be in the top 10 next month, but it had a good run, and it's nice to see a new band get this much attention. It's also nice to talk about new bands on Billboard Gets Rocked. It gets old talking about the same bands over and over again. Number 8, Champagne from Five Finger Death Punch. This song is awful. It's a song about how Ivan Moody is shoving in all the quote, haters' faces that he's happy. He also complains about TMZ and Blabbermouth. It's the same song that's been done for years now. Nothing is different in substance or writing. They say I'm overrated, that I should have already made it. Give a shit about it all because I love to be Moody sounds like he's just lazily sitting around in a studio recording the vocals, not using his full talents. The rhythm section of Jeremy Spencer and Chris Kale, who are very talented musicians, might as well not even be listed in the credits for this one. No one is trying. It's the exact same hot garbage of a grown man complaining about how people are complaining about him, and how news sites are reporting on the messed up things he's done in public. Will it be in the top 10 next month? Probably. Five Finger Death Punch is now a go-to for radio DJs because most of the tough guy college dropout bros who love this stuff will gladly play this one song on loop just because it's new. And they refuse to admit that it doesn't sound any different from anything the band has done recently. I've been saying it for years. This is wasted potential. Five Finger Death Punch have talent, but they're not trying. It's just cover songs over and over again, and then you get occasionally something like Champagne. It's awful. Don't act surprised why your label tries to sue you for phoning it in when you're clearly phoning it in. Number 7, Crazy by From Ashes to New. After some big lineup changes over the past year from what many people thought would be a strong upcoming new metal band with a following, From Ashes to New have worked on pushing forward and Crazy definitely reflects that. It's a far cry from the writing of their debut album, Day One. The song is a safe structure and doesn't really push the boundaries or hard rock style, but it's for a simple song, it works okay. The chorus line is a good hook, and I think that the song can help fans of the band's first iteration return to what From Ashes to New has planned for the future. The song is a bit standard, but I don't hate it, and I understand why people would dig it. From Ashes to New is currently on tour with Bad Wolves, and are really trying to make another push as a band in a relatively short time. Here's hoping they can step it up from their day one days and make a name for themselves in the right ways. Even though Crazy has been on this chart for months now, unlike The Fever 333's Walking In My Shoes, this song really fits that radio format well, so I can definitely see it staying in the top 10 next month. 
Number 6, The Line by Foo Fighters. I had thought we had seen the last of songs from Concrete and Cold, but serves me right for ever counting out a big name band from mainstream rock charts. Foo Fighters are now being played on many alternative stations with The Line, making the third single from the latest album. While I thought Run was fantastic and The Sky as a Neighborhood was fine, The Line doesn't hold my interest as much as the first two singles. There are some good guitar effects that definitely help and add a bit of flair to the song, but after a few listens of the track it really becomes background noise. The song is not bad by any means, I just didn't see it getting this much airplay. Grohl and Hawkins give a good performances, it's a shorter track for Foo Fighters, it just doesn't leave that much of an impression for me when compared to the two previous singles from Concrete and Gold, and it doesn't really feel that big. Foo Fighters are still on a roll though, and with a big arena tour coming this fall, I don't see them slowing down. I do see the line being in the top 10 next month because just how quickly it shot up on the charts. And because everyone loves Dave Grohl. As we all should. Number 5, Shadow of Your Love by Guns N' Roses. I was wrong about this one, I don't even know what to say anymore. It's 2018 guys, it's 2018 and a song written a long time ago that was featured in a box set is in the top 5 most played rock songs. I knew that insanely expensive box set would sell well, but I didn't know Guns N' Roses would get even more out of it from a song they decided to put with this collection. The phrase, where do we go now, really has more of an impact for me because I don't know what to add at this point. Last month, I thought this song was going to be off the top 10. Nope, it's moved up 4 spots. I like the song fine, it has a good flair, and it feels like Axel really has his vocal ability, because this was back in the day. I just still can't believe that it's getting this much airplay across the country. If you ever wanted proof that radio prefers certain big names over newcomers, this is it. This is only the second time I've had to do this for a prediction on Billboard Gets Rocked, so will Shadow of Your Love be on the top 10 next month? No, it will not. Number 4, Zombie by Bad Wolves. The big run for this 90s cover song is still going strong after 21 weeks on the chart at this point. Of the top 4 songs on this list, Zombie is one of the two that I'm surprised with just how long it stayed at such a high ranking. I don't really even know how many people are wanting it to be played at this point, but regardless it's still getting pumped over the airways heavily. Like I mentioned earlier, Bad Wolves is on tour with From Ashes to New, and later this summer are going on a big tour with Breaking Benjamin. There are other songs now being played on some FM stations and satellite radio from Bad Wolves, like Hear Me Now featuring Diamante. It's a breath of fresh air as where Zombie has definitely gotten stale. I'm sure there's a metaphor for this zombie needs to die, but honestly, this 90s cover song really needs to start falling off the charts. It's just how it is, and I know that's a bold prediction for a number 4 song, but I don't see it being on the top 10 next month. It's just had its run. Number 3, Devil by Shinedown. Speaking of songs that have been in the top 10 for a while, Devil from Shinedown is still sitting high at number 3. I've grown a bit warmer to the band's new album, Attention Attention, but Devil is becoming a bit of a drag now. In my opinion, it got old fast just because of how the verses roll in the song, but I don't hate it. It's just becoming a bit numbing at the repetition is now starting to become rough. This is another time where I wish songs would cycle a little faster on radio for newer bands or even newer songs from the big bands because in cases like this, the song gets easily burned out for many people. As exciting as it can be to hear a new song on mainstream that really connects and that you wouldn't expect, it can really be a drag when a band stays on radio play for so long with one song that you really had enough with months ago. Will it be on the top 10 next month? Probably. Radio will never stop playing Shined Out, and for better or worse, that's just how it is. Number 2, Rats by Ghost. Jumping up to number 2 is a song that really proves Ghost belongs in everyone's attention from both the metal community and mainstream rock fans. Cardinal Copy and Company really reached many more people now, arguably more so than with the big songs like Square Hammer and From the Pinnacle to the Pits over the past few years. Whether you're into the gimmick or not, it appears to be working for them. Akel was the first 10 out of 10 I gave this year, and I can't stress enough how it's worth listening to even if you remotely enjoy the song Rats. This is the type of band that can attract a new audience and even get new listeners into heavier music. It's also not the typical rock band playing the same old song and dance, so seeing Rats this high is nice. 
I do think Rats will be in the top 10 next month, and I do believe that it'll be number one, even if just for a little bit. It'll sneak up there. It may not even be covered on Dopo Gets Rocked at number one next month, but I can see it sneaking up there for at least a week. It's that catchy of a song, and it really works. Hopefully it's at number one for at least one week. Come on, that's not asking much. Number one, Bulletproof by Godsmack. This song is still at number one. I knew it would stay on the top 10 from a month ago, but I did not believe it would stay at number one for so long. The reason I'm starting to dread Billboard Gets Rocked occasionally is because some songs not only stay on the charts for an insane amount of time, not only do those songs stay at the top, but I run out of things to say about the track. Without beating a dead horse, Mainstream has their staple bands they rely on, and it's at least part of the reason why the rock scene hasn't been on top for a while. I like Godsmack fine, but at this point I could go for the rest of my life and not hear Bulletproof again. It is standard rock, and that's not Godsmack at their best. Their latest album has better songs on it than this. Then again, I say that, those songs will get radio play, and I might get burned out on those also. I always try to say, like what you like. If you enjoy a song, then listen to it. Have your own opinion of it. The point I'm trying to make here though is that unless the song is truly groundbreaking and something amazing on many levels, it'll get old after a while. Regardless of how talented the band behind it is, this song will most likely be on the top 10 next month, but hopefully we'll have something new at number one. And that was a look at the top 10 songs on Billboard's mainstream rock chart at the end of June. What was your favorite song on the list? Leave a comment and let people know. Please subscribe, you can check out my concert photography on Instagram, and you can keep up to date with Rocked on Facebook and Twitter.